Hello there and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, my name is Michelle Ferre and I'm a fourth grade teacher in Maryland. A year ago, I started filming these classroom favorites videos where I share things that I have purchased on Amazon because I have a serious problem. And I figured if I'm going to be purchasing many things from Amazon and I truly like them, I might as well share them with you all so you can purchase them too if you have no willpower like me. So that's exactly what I'm going to do today. I'm gonna to share with you five recent purchases I have made on Amazon for my classroom that I have truly loved. So if you have been following me for a long time, you know that I really like pens, specifically colorful pens. I have an entire caddy that is on my desk full of different pens. It's kind of a problem, but my favorite pen of all of them is the Papermate Flare Pen. I love the way that it writes, the colors are all super vibrant, but there is one issue. If you're a teacher balling on a budget, those pens are pretty expensive. But today, I'm going to share with you a fantastic dupe for the Paper Mate Flare Pens, and those are the Amazon, hold on, I have to read it from the screen because I literally can't remember this, Amazon Basics Felt Tip Markers, which are basically flare pens, but from Amazon and a lot cheaper. These are $8.50 for a 12 pack, at least at the time I'm filming this video. Okay, Amazon loves to change things up, so if the price changes, don't come crying to me. It's not my fault, blame Amazon. But Papermate flare pens for a 12 pack usually run about $12 at the cheapest. Sometimes they can be even more, and that is about a 30% savings. As you can see, the design is very similar. It has the full color plastic on the outside and it does have a metal clip. They look basically the same as flare pens and the colors are just as vibrant as flare pens. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do kind of a side by side comparison. That way you can see exactly how the colors compare. For the most part, they're right on the money. However, there are two colors that just don't live up to what the flare pens look like. The first one is the yellow. It's not that it doesn't live up to a flare pen, it's just a different color yellow. This is very much like what I picture a sunshine yellow color being, whereas the flare pens, they come out more of a golden color. So it really just depends what you're looking for. Now, the magenta color on the other hand, I will say this is the only pen I am disappointed in. It just does not come out as a magenta color. It truly looks like a light purple. In fact, when you write with it, it looks pretty much the same color as this one. I don't notice a big difference there. So I will say this one, kind of a loss, but the rest of them all compare very, very closely to the flare pens. What I love about these pens in general is they do not smear on the paper. They dry like that. So if your hand runs over it, you don't have to worry about it, you know, messing up your page. They also are very good at not bleeding through the paper, unless the paper is super thin. But if the paper is super thin, pretty much any pen is gonna bleed through. But the flare pens as a whole do a really good job of not bleeding through, and so do these. I will say one negative about these is that you can only purchase them in either a 12 pack or a 24 pack on Amazon. Whereas the flare pens, they come in all these different like combinations and you can even buy them by the single color in like a multi-pack of like 12 of black ones or 12 blue ones. You get the point. These ones, however, do not have that option yet. But you know, Amazon, if you're watching this, you should consider that because I would buy a 12 pack of these black ones in a hot minute. Another purchase I made recently that I am loving are these numbered carpet spots. So these have been around for a long time. I trying to remember the original like brand that came up with them. I can't remember off the top of my head. If you know, leave it down in the comments. But now there's tons of companies that make these. They are essentially these little like nylon-y circles and they have like hook and loop fasteners, also known as Velcro but technically Velcro is like the brand name and this isn't Velcro. So hook and loop fasteners on the back that allow them to adhere to carpet. Now teachers traditionally use these to mark spots on the carpet for students to sit on. And honestly, I've never had a need for it. When I switched over to fourth grade, I never really brought my students to the carpet because my old room was too small. I couldn't fit them all up there. But now that I am teaching reading, the way that our curriculum is structured, I do need to have them on the carpet for our read aloud and the I do and we do portions of the lesson. 
And I will say, you know, at first it was all hunky-dory. We were like one big family and my kids didn't have a problem sitting on the carpet. But now, you know, it's a little bit later in the year and suddenly my kids don't want to sit on the carpet or they're not sitting exactly where they should be or they're like spreading out lounging and it's just not working. So I needed to go ahead and invest in some of these. What I really like though about these ones is not only are they different colors. So there are six colors, pink, red, orange, yellow, green, and blue each one of the colors has six dot or six yeah dots six circles <laughs> and they are also numbered so numbers one through six are blue and then seven through twelve are green and so on and so on and I absolutely love the numbers because my students are each assigned a number and this makes it that much easier for them to find their spot now these run about four inches wide just in case you're wondering about measurements and they can easily be moved Moved around so once you put it on the carpet you can just tear it off move it somewhere else which for me works out really well because my students come to the carpet for reading instruction and I want to be equitable so I actually rotate the rows once a month so basically at the start of a new month whoever was currently sitting in the second row moves up to the first row whoever was in the third row moves up to the second row and so on and whoever was in the first row goes to the back that way they're constantly in a new spot so at the end of the month I easily just rip these up and move them up a row to the new spot that that student will be sitting Another thing that I love about these is you can actually vacuum right over top of them. You don't have to take them up if you're going to vacuum your carpet. The custodians vacuum my carpet most nights of the week and they're able to vacuum right over top of these with no problem. Now the problem is these exact ones that I got are currently sold out, but I will link another one that looks basically identical because if you go onto Amazon, there's like a million of these. I picked these because they had really good reviews. They had the different colors and they were numbered so I will find another comparable one that also has good reviews and I will link that one for you instead totally just realized I never told you the price uh, these specific ones were about $13 which for 36 of them is a steal okay moving on <laughs> the next thing I wanted to share with you is a custom stamp can I just say that this little sucker right here has been a game changer it's one of those things that I have no idea why I didn't purchase sooner because truly, oh, like, I, I, I have no words, but it's wonderful. This is the Excel Mark brand, which I just have always heard good things about, so I trusted it. And this is a customizable stamp. Now this particular one only allows you to put in one line of text that's up to 25 characters long, but there are a ton of other options that allow you to have up to like seven lines of text, I think was the one that I saw that was the biggest. So you can definitely get more text if needed. Now this ran about $10, including the customization. That is a part of it. It comes in 11 different colors and there's like eight different fonts, I think that you can choose from. I take that back, 18 fonts, not eight fonts. Now the actual stamp size is nine sixteenths of an inch by an inch and a half. So just a little bit bigger than a half an inch tall and then it's an inch and a half long. One of the things that I love about this stamp is that it is self inking. I don't have to have a separate ink pad. I literally push down on it and it stamps and then it folds itself back up so I don't have to worry about it drying out. Now this also has a double sided ink pad. So you are actually able to remove the ink pad flip it over, reinsert it for double the length of time to be able to use it, which come on, you're getting your money's worth. And when that ink pad does finally die, it is replaceable. So instead of getting a whole new stamp, you can just get a new ink pad or you can even re-ink the ink pad that is already in it. Now, so far I've only created myself one stamp, but I have so many ideas in my head of future stamps I'm going to create. This one actually says possible redo. We do have a redo policy. That sounded kind of weird. We do have a redo policy, but students who earn less than a 70% on an assignment are able to redo it to improve their score. And they can redo up to three assignments per subject area per marking period, which is a lot. And I was personally writing possible redo on every paper that a student could possibly redo. So if they got below a 70%, I would write that on there. And while it doesn't seem like a big deal to just write possible redo, 
after doing that for months and months on end, it's really sucking a lot of my time. So I thought there has to be an easier way. I'm sure I could make a stamp that already says possible redo. So all I have to do is stamp the paper instead of writing it. Now here already are the other ways I'm thinking about using this. I want to create one that has my last name on it so I can stamp it in books for my library instead of handwriting my last name in the library book. But I'm gonna wait, you know, until my last name changes this October and then I will get a stamp with my new last name which will be Emerson. Another way I've thought about using this is to get one that actually has the two different areas of math that we grade. So we grade on computational skills and we grade on problem solving. And sometimes I will take one assignment and I will give students a computational skills grade and a problem solving grade. And in order to communicate that with parents, I would have to write like computational skills, problem solving. And that was a huge time waster. So I could actually create a stamp. I could get one that has two lines. I could have one line say computational skills and one line say problem solving. So I could just stamp it on the page and then write the grade next to it. I also thought that these would be fantastic for special educators. Personally, I have two different special educators that work in my room and I know that they're always writing accommodations that the students used on that actual paper, but I thought they could use one of these stamps, maybe one of the ones that has seven lines on it, and they could have it be almost just like check boxes. So it could have all the possible accommodations that that student has. They stamp it and then they can just check off the ones that the student used. My mind is just like, come on, why didn't I think of this sooner? As a teacher, I just think that my time is one of my most valuable resources, so any little gadget that can save me some time is well worth the $10 in my opinion. The next item I have is this storage clipboard, which was about $11. Now I got mine in black because that is my favorite color, but it does also come in pink and teal. So this is like a regular clipboard, but way better because first of all, it does have this little groove at the bottom to be able to hold a pen or a pencil, which I just love, but it also unclips at the bottom, opens up and has storage on the inside. Come on. Personally, I feel like anytime I go to a meeting, I'm always bringing papers to grade and a pen to be able to grade them with. And I feel like I'm just carrying all this stuff and then it starts falling out. But with this, I could actually put the papers I'm going to grade on the inside along with a pen. I could even fit a notebook in there and then it's all in one place. I do love that it's not super thick because I have seen some clipboard cases like this that are pretty chunky and it would be like a good two inches thick. This one I would say is about an inch thick, which is just really, really good. And there's a hair on the back. I'm so sorry. Especially because I use clipboards for clipboard cruising, which is a way for me to take anecdotal notes of students as a form of formative assessment during instruction. So if a student's working on a problem, I jot down notes on how they're doing and whether they need reteaching or whether they're ready for enrichment. And along with that, because I usually have a checklist and I would put it on a clipboard, I usually am also carrying extra papers that I can use to help out my students and scaffold them. So things like graphic organizers. If we're working on a particular word problem and they're struggling with it, I can give them an organizer to help them be able to make their learning visible. I also will carry along like challenge problems. So if a student is ready for enrichment, I can just quickly slip it to them. But the problem is on one clipboard that gets really difficult to manage. So with this, I can actually have my little checklist and my anecdotal notes on the front. And then on the inside, I can keep those extra papers so I can easily grab them if and when needed. I do feel like the plastic is pretty durable. I mean, so far so good. Like I haven't had any problems. The clip is nice and secure and it doesn't feel too cheap. So well worth the $11. My last item is actually a pair of pants and I get it. They're technically not for my classroom, but I wear them in my classroom. So I'm including them. So let's talk about pants real quick. I wear skirts to work a lot just because I feel more loose in them and I feel more comfortable. However, in the winter time when it's like 20 degrees outside, they're not the best clothing options. So I did need to invest in some pants, but for me, I always find it very difficult to find pants that fit. My quads and just legs in general are very muscular. So whenever the pants are tight around there, they're super loose in my waist and it just has never been a fun experience trying to shop for pants. 
But I went on Amazon and I said there has to be a solution and I saw these and I just thought first of all they're adorable. I love the little kind of ruffle detail at the top. I love the little bow and these are actually a crop length so they're made to fit you know up above your ankles but for me being five foot three they fit like normal pants. But what I really love about these is the material. It's nice and stretchy, so they're very comfortable. Sometimes you wear stretchy pants. It's for fun. And they're high-waisted. They fit up above your hips, which as a teacher, when you're constantly sitting down and sometimes even on the floor, I always worry about things that are not high-waisted because you know it starts creeping down in places you don't want it to creep down. But these, they stay up nice and high, and I never have to worry about being uncomfortable or making someone else uncomfortable it's just a win-win now this little belt here is removable but i think it looks kind of weird without the belt so personally i would only wear it with the belt but when i'm washing it i don't wash the belt every time there's not really a need for it so i will just hang it in my closet wash the pants and then reattach the belt and i wash the belt like every other time these do come in 15 colors. I personally have already purchased four of the colors. I have wine, light blue, light gray, and charcoal gray, which is this color. They also range in sizes from extra small to 3XL. So they have a very wide size range, which I like. I have no idea what size I have, hold on. I personally wear a small and they are tighter fitting around my legs, but they still fit well enough that I don't feel like I'm constricted. And then around the waist, because it is an elastic waistband, it fits really well. They do have pockets. Now they're not like, the best pockets ever um, when you put your phone in it it looks kind of weird because it's like right on the front of your leg and especially if it fits tighter around your leg it just looks weird and i will say that they do get kind of wrinkly you can probably see that here but then you know if you look at my shirt I, I don't really care about things being wrinkly okay my clothes get wrinkly all the time but i will say i use a clothing steamer instead of an iron because i hate ironing and it takes out the wrinkles like that one final note about these pants, the way that they fit kind of forces you to tuck your shirt in because it just looks weird if you don't because of the like little, you know, ruffled waistband and the bow. If your shirt goes over top, it makes you look kind of lumpy in that area. So I personally like to wear tops that are kind of tighter fitting that I can easily tuck in. I will actually link below a black top that I like to wear and it kind of has like these bell sleeves and it's very tight fitting around the body and it comes in different colors. So if you are interested in that top to wear with this, I will link that for you in the description box. Now, if you made it this far in the video, congratulations, I appreciate you. And to show my appreciation, we're gonna have a little giveaway, okay? And people who clicked off the video will have no clue about this. I'm gonna give away a $50 Amazon gift card so you can go and you know purchase these goodies or any other goodies you wanna get from Amazon. All you need to do to enter is subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and then leave a comment down below on which of these five items you are most excited about. I will respond to the winner's comment exactly one week after this video goes live. So make sure that you check back or check your email, however it is that you get notified that I responded to your comment. Go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe because those are the first two steps of the giveaway. Leave your comment down below because it only takes a couple of seconds. And until next time, thank you so much for watching. I love you so much. Don't forget to put your positive pants on and I will catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end of this video and for supporting my YouTube channel. If you wanna check out any of my older videos, you can use the two links right down here. If you wanna to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any future videos, you can use the link right up here. The links to all of my social media sites, my Teachers Pay Teacher store, my merchandise store, and my Amazon store are in the description box and I'll catch you guys in the next one.